Stay the course. Stay the course. Amen. Look at somebody else. Just, just tell them. Stay the course. Amen. Praise God. Y'all come on. Let's gather together. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's, let's go tonight. Go with me to Galatians chapter 6. Praise God. So we got to stay the course. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Father, speak to us now. Holy Spirit, you're the teacher. Open our eyes tonight and give us revelation, truth, insight, and understanding of the mysteries of Christ. We declare after hearing your word, our lives will never, ever be the same ever again in Jesus' name. Shout out, will never be the same in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Y'all can shut that door over there for me. Amen. Galatians 6. Amen. Galatians 6. And verse 9. The Bible says, And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen? It says, Let us not be weary. Don't be weary in well doing. For in due season shall there's a due season. Amen? All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Praise God. All right, it says, uh, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Shall I have a due season? Amen. Come on, shout it again. I have a due season. Amen. And so all the labor, everything that you're doing and fulfilling, carrying out, for what God has given and called for you to do, everything you're birthing, there's a due season of fulfillment and blessing over your life. And sometimes it gets tough, it gets rough. <laughs> and sometimes it feels like it's not working. Sometimes it feels like things are not happening. Sometimes it feels like uh, just, it's, it's just going nowhere. <laughs> Amen. But say with me, it's not about what it looks like. It's about what I believe. Amen. And so everything that we do relating to the work and the assignment and the plan and purposes of what God's called for us to do is by faith. It's by faith. Everything that God's called for you to do is by faith. So it's not about what it looks like, what it appears to be. Because a whole lot of the time, I'll say about 80% of the time, it looks like it's just not working out. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. It looks like everything is against what you're trying to do and what you're working what you're birthing. It sometimes it seems like you're going in circles. <laughs> sometimes it feels like you're just spinning your wheels. But we walk by faith, not by sight. We have the word of God. That's our hope. Our hope and our confidence and trust is not in what it looks like. And so not at any moment and not at any time that I'm fulfilling the will of God for my life can I get over into the road of what it looks like. Amen. It's the word of God doesn't change. Every time I open up the Bible, the Bible is still saying the same thing. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. It's still saying the same thing. Walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. I got to stay in faith. I got to stay locked in faith. I got to stay focused in faith. What God said. So I got to stay focused on what God said and not what it looks like. Amen. So I can't get into the weary road. And so we understand the components that we need to focus on to not be weary, to not be distracted, to not be burnt out. Amen. So we don't have to be burned out. Okay? So the flesh burns out. <laughs> so carnality burns out. Okay? But the life we have in Christ is life in the spirit. Is that right? There's no burnout. Come on, say it with me. There's no burnout. In the spirit. That's why we got to stay with him. We got to stay in him. In the spirit. So that we're not. Becoming weary. And so those two key components. That keeps me strong. Is the word of God. And pray. Two key components that. I can never forget. I cannot let go. It is the key. To my victory triumph 
and living as an overcomer consistently as a believer every day. Not just sometimes, all the time. Say with me, not just sometimes, but all the time. So I got to stay in him. If I draw back from him, if I draw back from prayer, if I draw back from the word of God, I'm going to go back to depending on, leaning on, hoping in, relying on the old man. Because that's all that's left. Amen, somebody. And so if I don't let the spirit lead me, then I'm going to be led by the flesh. And so the flesh is where disappointment comes from. The flesh is where frustration comes from. The flesh is where uh, willing to quit and give up. That's where that comes from. Uh, yes, well, uh, go to Luke 18. Hold your place here. We got a lot to see tonight. We're going to talk about the return of Christ. We got hope. Jesus is coming back. So Jesus is coming back. Amen. And so we got to stay the course. Why? Because we, he, he's coming to get us. <laughs> so he's coming to get us. <laughs> Amen. And so, you know, we, we look all around at the signs of the time. We're in the end time. We're living in the end time. Amen. And so when Jesus, when did the end begin? So we should know that. When did the end of the world begin? You need to write this down. When did the end of the world begin? It began when Jesus came. Wow. It began when he started his ministry. And so that's when the end of the world started, okay? And so there's some stuff that's going to happen that has to happen uh, before he comes back. And, you know, this, this world, everything that we see around is going to be destroyed. Is that right? The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. Amen? But his word shall stand forever. So the only thing that's going to be standing in the end when everything else is gone, wiped out, burnt up, washed away, is going to be the word of God, <laughs> you see. So I can't trust in my house, can't trust in my car, can't trust in uh, material things, can't trust in people. I got to put my trust and my hope in Christ, in God, and I got to keep it there. People will disappoint you. Can't trust in people. Can't, no, no. You know, my, my rule is trust God only. Check everybody else out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Check everybody else out. <laughs> trust God only. And check everybody else out. Evaluate everything. Amen. Because he's never going he's never gonna to leave you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even until the what? End of the world. Okay? And so our, our dependency is in him. We're standing and building on the word of God. We'll never be shaken. We have, we have the word of God telling us. We have his promise. We have a guarantee from the kingdom that if I build my life on the word of God, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to face some things. He said, it won't even shake me. That's what Luke 6 says. Amen? All right? And so... Let's look at that. Uh, oh, my God. We're going to look at both of those. Luke 18 first, quick. Luke 18. Hallelujah. I, I don't have to be. I, I could be shaken. I, I could quit, but I don't have to. Amen? I could be shaken. I could be disturbed. I could be frustrated. I could just, I mean, just, just go crazy, but I don't have to. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Because it's not me that's living no more. But I got to let Jesus continue to live through me now. And that's by doing those two key components, which is living by the word of God and living in an established prayer life. And so Luke 18 and 1, come on, he says, uh, Luke 18 and 1, and, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always to pray. Come on, read it with me. That men ought to always what? Pray and what? And not to faint. And so I don't have to be weary to faint, to quit. To give up because it's going to be tough. He already told Jesus told us it's going to be tough. He said in the world, you're going to have tribulation. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be chaos. There's going to be persecution. There's going to be attacks. <laughs> there's going to be affliction. I mean, all this stuff that we face and deal with as believers, he's telling us this is what's going to happen. And so the flesh, you can't depend on it. Paul said, 
that we have no confidence. He instructed to the Philippian church. He said, we have no confidence in the flesh. And so if he said, according to the word of God, we have no confidence in the flesh, I can't ha have it either. <laughs> Amen. So we can't have it either. We can't trust in the flesh either. Why? Because the flesh is going to have you on that frustration road, roller coaster road, just, just burnt out and overcome. We're not called to be overcome anymore. Jesus said, too much blood. He died on the cross. Not for us to be the same. There's power to live now. There's power to overcome. These are not just words. The Bible is not just a book full of suggestions. He's not giving you a suggestion. He's giving you a guarantee. He's giving you a foundation. Hallelujah. He's giving you power. He's giving you authority. That's what these words are. These words are authority. It's force. It's power. Oh, my God. That it creates in you what it says. Wow. And so I got to stick with it. I got to meditate on it until I see in me what it says. Till I see showing up in my life what it says. Because he said it's going to bring me somewhere to a place, to a destination that I didn't have before. That's what the word is doing. It's bringing you to a destination. Amen? And so it's not about what I think. It's about what he guaranteed for me. It's what he has established for me. Oh, my God. And so I got to let the condition of the word of God become my condition of living, my condition of thinking. I got to think like him. I got to see like him. I got to understand like him. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to be. Amen? And so Paul said, I press. That's why he said that. I'm pressing toward the mark. Jesus is the mark. I'm pressing towards him. I know I'm dealing with some stuff right now, but I'm pressing towards him. I'm pressing through it. Pressing signifies that there's opposition. I'm getting through the opposition. I'm not going to let the opposition stop me. I'm not going to let the opposition move me. I'm going through it because there's a destination. There's joy on the other side. Come on, shout, there's joy on the other side. Come on, shout, there's peace on the other side. Shout, there's strength on the other side. Amen. All right. And so Jesus didn't tell us to do anything that he didn't do himself first. He lived by his own word, by the word of the Father. Glory to God. So he lived by the word. Amen. And so he exercised those two, those two key components. He lived by the word and he prayed persistently. He didn't do anything without prayer. Amen. And so we're called to do the same thing. He didn't rely on the flesh. He could have, but he didn't. He was a man, just like us. But he was a man, what? Anointed by God. Guess what? You're anointed. You have a measure of anointing upon your life. What is it for? It's to empower you to conquer and to overcome the personal issues in your life. Hallelujah. Satan doesn't want you to know that. He wants you to just live your life, try to do the best you can, try to just make it somehow. <laughs> the devil is a liar. He doesn't want you to know that you have power over him. He wants you to think that you have to succumb to and that you have to bow down to the issues of your life, to the things that you're facing. Whatever you're going through, then you got to deal with it. You got to come to the place of its environment of that situation. No, everything comes into under submission to the will of God <laughs> according to what he's called you to be and do. Wow. Amen. So I can't just sit there and watch stuff happen. I have to start creating. That's why the confession of your faith is so important. Amen. The confession of your faith is so important. And so when you see things happening, going on, that's contrary to the will of God, you got to change it with the word of God. Change it by faith. I will not be moved. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God, you said I can call on you in the day of trouble, and you'll come and deliver me out. See, he said to Jeremiah, I'm watching over my word to what? To perform it. So you got to give God something to work with. He doesn't respond to doubt and unbelief. He can't move in it. You see, why? That's symptoms of the flesh. 
And so he responds to faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. So I can't please him without faith. So I got to make sure that I'm doing my part and that's staying what? Locked in the word so that I'm prepared. I already know trouble's coming. I already know something's coming. I already know somebody's coming. <laughs> so the enemy's going to use things. He's going to use people. He's going to use situations. If something's coming, you got to be prepared. Remember, that's part of your armor. Paul described, which is the what? Preparation of the gospel of peace. You got to be prepared. And so I understand now that if I'm falling into doubt and unbelief, I hear three things right now. If I'm falling into doubt and unbelief, I'm not prepared. Mm. Wow. I got to stay prepared. So I got to stay prepared. All right. Go to Luke 6. Because I hear something else. Luke 6. We got to go to Mark 11. Remember Mark 11. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So we have hope. We have so much to look forward to. Jesus is coming back. Wow. Dead in Christ shall rise first. We that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Just keep going. Don't quit. Keep going. We got much to look forward to. So he's coming to get us. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Can we praise him for that right now? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He's, he's coming to get us. All right. Look, look at Luke 6 and verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and hear my sayings and do of them, I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48. He is like a man which built a house, dig deep, laid the foundation on a rock, and when the flood rose and the stream beat violently upon that house and could not shake it. See, the word of God is going to cause you to not even be shaken. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's look at it again. He is like a man which what? Built a house. What house? His life. What house is he talking about? Come on, point to yourself. Look at this house. Amen. He's talking about this house. You're building this house upon a rock. If you look up that word rock in the Greek, it's Petra, which means huge, massive mountain, which means the revelation of Jesus Christ. You're building on the word of God. And so, because you're building on the word of God, which we looked at these gates on Sunday, amen? And he said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against what? Against the church. Why? Because we're built on Petra. We're built on a solid rock. We're, we're built on a solid rock of revelation knowledge of the word of God. And so the gates of hell cannot penetrate the gates of heaven. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. See, the church, you need to write this down. The church is the gate of heaven. Oh, my God. You are the only access in the earth that people have to heaven. The body of Christ. Oh, shout hallelujah, somebody. Whew, come on now. Buddha is not the way. Muhammad is not the way. <laughs> All of these, come on now. You know, in, in the Chinese restaurant, the big statue of Buddha sitting there, the big gold statue, and they got food all around waiting for him to eat them one day. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. True story. Uh, they're at a Buddhist temple. Uh, they had all the fruit laying around. This big Buddha statue. And the next day they came, the fruit was eaten up. And oh boy, they said, finally, Buddha came <laughs> and has eaten the fruit. He received our offering. And so they put fresh fruit around there again. And so one of them looked and saw in the middle of the night that the rats were coming <laughs> and eating the fruit <laughs> around, that was around the statue. Come on, so, so Buddha not real. False God. It's the, the rats ate the fruit. <laughs> Amen. Buddha's not going to save anybody. Muhammad's not going to save anybody. You see. 
You know, the standoff that they had in the days of Elijah with the prophets of Baal, the false god Baal. And many of the people of God turned to this idol god Baal, and they were worshiping Baal. And so they, they were prophets prophesying, of, uh, prophesying for Baal. And so they had a standoff where Elijah came to them and said, I tell you what, you call out, you build an altar. And, and you call on your God, Baal, and then, and then I'll call on my God. And I tell you what, the God that answers by fire, let him be the God. <laughs> and so the prophets of Baal, they put the bullock on the altar. They're dancing around, crying out. To Baal, oh Baal, oh Baal. And so Elijah starts mocking them and says, surely he's a God, right? Is he coming? <laughs> then he says, uh, uh, maybe he's on a paradventure. The word paradventure means using the bathroom on the toilet. <laughs> so he starts mocking them. He says, maybe he's somewhere on the toilet somewhere and just too busy to come to you and come for you. And then the evening time came and he told them, come on. And he went on, repaired the altar, went on and cut up the bullock on the altar, put, put a, a 12 barrels of water, built a trench, put the stones on the altar. And so he begins to pray and call out to God. Let it be known that you are the only true God. And the Bible says that fire fell from heaven, licked up all of the water that was in the trench, consumed the bullock and the rocks on the altar. And it was known that day that God, Oh, somebody ought to praise him right now. Hallelujah. That he is God. There is no other. There is no other. Hallelujah. And so many people now who refuse to believe, refuse to trust in him, the true God, who are serving idols and have rejected Christ, they will see when the day comes, the Bible says that when he appears, men's hearts will be failing them because of all of those things that will be happening on the earth. When he appears, my God, they will be running, trying to hide from him. There's nowhere to hide. He's everywhere. Amen. King of kings, Lord of lords. Come on, shout, he is the Lord of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And so if I build my life on the word, on the Petra, when the flood, what, arose? What else? When the stream beat vehemently, what's that, violently against that house, what happens? It could not shake it. In other words, he's showing you tonight that there's a place that you can get in him being built and established on the word of God that you don't even have to be shaken by stuff. Ooh. That's why he said, let it not come to mind. Take no thought what you're going to eat what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on. He said, the Father already knows what you have need of. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. One thing that is priority in your life, one thing that's major priority, and that's seeking first the kingdom of God. Everything else is second. And everything else, God already knows that you have need of them. What does that mean, though? It means that he already has a plan for you to receive them. Mm. Oh, my God. Nothing takes him by surprise. <laughs> Nothing takes God by surprise. He already has a plan for you to come into the fullness of everything that you need. It's already provided for. What did Paul say? But my God, he told the church of Philippi, he said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What are the riches in glory? Revelation principles, the keys of the kingdom. How's it going to supply your need? By you working the principles of his word. Listen, you take care of his business, God's going to take care of yours. The person, the Bible says, who obeys his commandments. The person who fears the Lord and serves him with his whole house and with his whole life. The Bible says that his seed shall inherit the earth. Oh, my God. The Bible says that wealth and riches shall be in his house. 
will not lack for anything. The person that serves God and seeks him with all of their heart. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He's leading you into the path that he has for you. Wow. That's why it's important for you to understand and know the will of God for your life. God has a plan for you. So God has a plan for me. And so I can't get caught up trying to do what someone else says, saying, I can't get caught up in trying to be what somebody else wants me to be. God has a plan specifically for my life. Wow. I got to be led by the Spirit. I got to be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. So you have to condition your heart to obey God. Oh, I hate you tonight, Father. I got to condition my heart to obey God. Amen. I listen to others, I got to listen to him. Wow. That's where your blessing is, in your obedience to the Father. Can somebody praise him tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Mark 11. Come on, quickly. Mark 11. Oh, thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Verse 22. And so he said, and Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Did you get that? He says, whosoever shall what? Say. So I'm supposed to be saying something to my mountain. That mountain represents the things that dares to come into your way the things that you're facing, the things that you're dealing with, the things that you're going through. What is your mountain tonight? What is your mountain right now? Are you speaking to your mountain? Your faith has been given to you by God so that you can speak to your mountain. Oh, hallelujah. When you speak to your mountain, it's, it's got to obey you. He said, watch this. He says, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not, what, doubt in his heart. If I doubt, I'm wavering, I'm going back and forth. Can God do it or can he not do it? Mm. Is God going to bring it to pass? Is he not going to bring it to pass? I cannot receive anything through doubt and unbelief. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let him not think that he can receive anything from the Lord. Oh, my God. So I, I have to be busy, what, working on my faith. That's what's important. Oh, my God. So I can walk in that freedom and liberty that Jesus shed his blood for me to receive. Because if not, I heard you, Lord. If not, guess what? You, you're going to be, you're going to be stressed out. You're going to be unnecessary. Mm. Read up on stress. See how stress affects the body. Ask your doctor how stress hinders the body. Read up on it. Search it. And you will see people right now, believers, church goes all over the world. It'll make your hair fall out. Stress. Hello, somebody. Amen? Unnecessary things that you deal with. Come on now. Because of what? Doubt and unbelief. What is it? What is doubt? What is unbelief? Where, where, what's happening? Write this down. One word. One word is the culprit of it all. What is it? Worry. Wow. Worry. Mm. I don't have to worry living by the word. Why? Because I already know 
the outcome. Mm. See, where does worry come from? Where does doubt come from? Where does unbelief come from? I cannot see. So I can't see. And so because I can't see, frustration abounds, fear abounds. Amen. And God said, and I've given you the spirit of fear. I did not give you the spirit of fear. But of power. There's people right now has business, business ideas inside of them. Businesses that they, they desire to open. But they can't. You know why? Fear. Paralyzed. Never will fulfill the God-given potential. Other things that God is calling for them to do. Will not do it. Will never do it. Why? Fear. That's why the number one spirit in this world that's dominating mankind is the spirit of fear. Wow. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Go to the Romans 8. Go to Romans 8. Whew. Oh, thank you, Father. Whew. Amen. Look at this. So we're sons of God. Amen. Verse 14 says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the who? Sons of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. Next verse says what? For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to what? To fear. He says, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of who? Adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We cry, Father, Father, which means what? Source, our source, our source. What are we saying? The one from whom all things, all supply comes from. There's no such thing as he doesn't have it. It's already supplied for you. Somebody ought to praise him tonight. Glory to God. Wow. It's already given. Everything you need. God said, God said, if I was hungry, come on, that's the word of God. God said in Psalms, if I was hungry, I would not even tell you about it. Wow. He said, I own the cattle on the thousand hills. The earth is mine. Wow. Oh, my God. Everything, the Bible says in Colossians, says that, that because of God, all things consist. The word consist means held together and held in place. All of the planets are held, all of the stars are held in place because of God's existence. If he would cease to be, everything would dissolve. Oh, my God. Come on, everything you need has already been made available for you. Got to get it. I said, I got to get it. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah, he says, it's God who sits in the circle of the earth and controls the universe. He is God. Jesus is Lord. And there is no other. <laughs> Amen. But he's not giving us. Come on, let's get this. He's not giving us the spirit of fear. Shout out with He's not giving me the spirit of fear. I will not be afraid to do what God called me to do in the name of Jesus. Wow. Don't be afraid to do it. You're here for a reason. He, he, you, you're called for a reason. He's equipped you for a reason. Inside of you, there's gifts, there's talents, there's skills, there's special abilities that God has given you to use it for his glory. Wow. Oh, my God. 
You are called to empty yourself of everything that he's given you. Why do you think Paul says, I kept the faith. <laughs> I finished my course. Wait a minute. I can know when I finished what God called me to do? Yeah. Oh, my God. If you're being led by him, Paul says, I kept the faith. I finished my course. There is therefore now laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Oh, my God. You got work to do. Can't get weary. Don't get weary. You got work to do. Oh, my God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Whew. Come on. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 3. <laughs> Praise you, Father. 2 Timothy 2 and 3. He says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Be a soldier. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout I'm a soldier. He called you a soldier. Endure hardness. Go through it. What does endure mean? It means to gird up under the pressure, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through. Gird up under the pressure and maintain your victory. Maintain your liberty. Go through it. Deal with it. Why? Because it's working for you. It's developing you. Oh, my God. Wow. See, faith comes by hearing. Say it with me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But my faith, come on, but my faith is developed by experience. What's the purpose of my trial? Developing my faith. Building up a trust and a confidence in God in a level that I never had before. If I didn't go through what I just went through, I would have never seen that level of power and authority moving, working, God moving for me. Wow. Like he just did. Oh my God. Creative opportunities. Oh, glory. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, come on, say it with me. Come on, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. So come on, shout. All things are working together for my good because I know I am the called according to his purpose and plan. Wow. Woo, let me give you these. Come on, shout hallelujah. All right, uh, go, go to, go, let's go over to 2 Thessalonians. Oh, my God. Let's, let's get this. So we have hope. Jesus is coming back. <laughs> 2 Thessalonians. Oh, praise you, Father. Chapter 2. Thank you, Father. We praise your name, Lord God. You have said amen. Look at this now. He says here in verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said we beseech you. That word beseech you, so we urge you, we beg you, we, we encourage you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said he's coming back. And by our gathering together unto him, verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind. Don't be shaken in mind. A lot of stuff is coming on the earth. A lot of stuff's going to happen. Let me see what the Bible says about wicked, 
wicked men, people that won't change, that keep abounding in sin. Go, go uh, shoot over there to um, uh, chapter uh, 3 of 2 Timothy. Hold your place right there. We're going to come right back. 2 Timothy. People that just won't change, won't refuse to change. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get real bad. See, people are saying, you know, uh, we, we got to change the world. Let me help you tonight. We got to change the world. We're going to change the world. Is that what God said? <laughs> Where do we get that from? You see, we're going to change the world. We're going to we're going to go out there, and the world's going to be a better place. Is that what the Bible says? Where do we get that from? Got it from the world. Look at this. Oh, oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax, what? Worse and what? And worse. Doing what? Deceiving and what? Being deceived. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. But verse 14, look, 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 look what Paul is pushing and encouraging Timothy. Look what he's telling him. He says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15, come on, read. And that from a child thou hast Known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. For all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, what does he say about the world? He said the world is going to get worse and going to get so bad that God is going to destroy it by what? By fire. <laughs> Let's look at a couple of these. Go, go back over to uh, 2 Thessalonians. Let's finish this. He said in verse 2, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. It's here. It's at hand. He's coming back any moment. There's no such thing as, you know, I'm just going to wait till that time comes and I'm just going to try to get right when, when I know Jesus is coming. <laughs> Let me help you tonight. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Go with me to Matthew 24. Oh, praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 24, verse 35. He says here, when you have a shot, amen. Verse 35 says what? Heaven and earth shall Pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So the only thing that's going to be standing is the what? Is the word of God. Read on. All right. And so he says, verse 36, but of that day and what? Hour knoweth who? No man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. So wait a minute. The angels don't know when Jesus is coming back. Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back. Only the Father. Oh, my God. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout, but Jesus is coming. Verse 37. 
But as the days, look at this, but as the days of Noah were, he said, this is how it's going to be. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were what? Eating and drinking and what? Marrying and what? Giving in marriage until the what? Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, verse 39, and knew not until the what? Flood came and took them took them all away. <laughs> wow. So shall also, look what he said. He said, this is just how it's going to be. What did Noah do? The Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Preaching, preaching what? The flood is coming. It's going to rain. The flood is coming. And he preached 120 years. He preached the flood is coming. They didn't believe him. They didn't listen to him. They didn't take heed to him. They just kept doing what they were doing, just kept doing their own thing, living their own way, till the flood came. Wow. Jesus just said in the word that what? It's going to be the same way when he comes back. Oh, my God. We're preaching the gospel. Jesus is coming back. We got to live for him. We got to be a church without what? Spot or wrinkle. We got to serve him. We're going to be judged. We got to please him. Amen. We got to walk in his will. We got to walk in righteousness. He's coming back. Wow. Folks are doing what? Laughing. Folks are doing what? They're just taking it lightly. What are folks doing? They're just, uh, you know, it, it's, there's no fear of God in your heart to get right. There's a what? Form of godliness. What did, what did Jesus call them? What do you call the Pharisees? Pretenders. Hypocrites. That's what hypocrites are. Pretenders. He, he said they're like on a stage play. Performance with no change. Wow. This is what's happening. That's why I don't get caught up when folks, I see people, preachers uh, in their pulpit, thousands of people playing around with the people of God. They're going to be judged. I'm not going to waste my time like a whole bunch of people are doing right now, going on Facebook, going on YouTube, and just trying to bring them, bring them out and trying to put them out there and, and, and trying to make them look bad. Look what they're doing. I don't have time for that. There's one person who sees. There's one who sees all that's being done. Wow. <laughs> they planted a vineyard, and there were some tares that came up, was planted. In the vineyard, the enemy came overnight and planted tares in the vineyard. And the servant said, Master, what are we going to do about this here? Should I dig up the tares? He said, no, you might dig up the wheat also. He said, let them both grow together, the wheat and the tares. That's what God's doing. That's what he's doing. Let the righteous and the unrighteous, let them come together. He said, in the harvest time, I'll separate them. Oh, 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 glory to God. He said, you ain't got to do nothing. He said, because what? He said, I'm going to call the righteous on the right, and I'm going to put the goats and the unrighteous on the left. Wow. I'm going to put the sheep on the right, <laughs> goats on the left. Save on the right, unsave on the left. He said, don't worry about it. Don't stress yourself out because of what you see. You know what people say, do you see what they did? It doesn't surprise me why. That's the world. It's the nature of the world. We have to be so focused and busy on our assignment. And he said, this gospel of the kingdom. Oh, yes, Lord. Go to uh, whew, let me get, uh, 14. 14. It's, it's in 14. Oh, my God. Yeah. Matthew. 24, 14. Come on. Go there. He says, I want you to read this. Oh, my God. Come on. What did he say? This gospel of the kingdom. Stop right there. What did he say? This gospel of the kingdom. See, everybody not preaching, ministering the gospel of the kingdom. Wow. Wow. He said, if I add to this and take away from it, I'm going to be judged. If I take this and make it say what I want it to say to make me comfortable, 
Oh, my God. But he does. And the Bible says that judgment, come on, Bible scholars, judgment begins where? At the house of God. Wow. It begins with us. If you judge yourselves, he says, you won't be judged. Oh, my God. Oh, somebody ought to praise him tonight. <laughs> Woo! So, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on back over to 2 Thessalonians. Oh, hallelujah. He said, verse 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let nobody deceive you. By what? Any means. For that day shall not come. Look what he says. That day shall not come except they're coming what? Falling away first. What's he saying? A whole lot of people go quit the church. He said a whole lot of folks are falling. Because they're not serving him from the heart. They don't want righteousness. He said, and that man of sin be what? Revealed the son of who? The son of who? Perdition. What's perdition mean? It means hell. The son of hell. And so this is Satan's counterfeit for what God has established. The who? God is God the Father. Satan has a trinity. D did you know that? <laughs> Say it with me. Satan has counterfeit everything that God has established. Wow. 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 Who was called, who did Jesus call the son of perdition? Judas. Wow. He prayed, he was praying to the Father. He said, not one of them is lost except one. <laughs> and that was who? Son of perdition. Perdition. Judas. Wow. Mm. Oh, I wish I had time to, to dig into all of that. Somebody say hallelujah. Study that out. He's called the son of hell because of Satan's counterfeit. For the Son of God. Wow. And so, read on. Let me, let me, let me see. Let me see. Oh, my God. Verse 4, he does what? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So there's, there's, there's a man coming. The Bible says, who's going to stand up in the temple, he's going to declare that he's God. See, you got to pay attention to what's happening over there in Israel right now. They're over there talking about, we found the Messiah. <laughs> Listen, where's Jesus? He's sitting down on the right hand of God the Father. See, you got to, you got to, you got to read, you got to study, you got to meditate. You need, you're supposed to know what's going on. You're supposed to know what's going on. You're supposed to know what's happening. The greatest deception, write this down, the greatest deception of a believer is through the lack of knowledge. What did God say? My people, Hosea 4, my people are destroyed. Why? Lack of knowledge. Wow. Amen. Amen. He said, verse 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
even him, verse 9, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and what? What kind of wonders? Lying wonders. And so those who are not founded, grounded, rooted in the word of God, a relationship with Christ, what happens? They're going to be deceived. Because they're going to follow a what? A sign and a wonder. Instead of their fruit in their righteousness in relationship with Christ. That's why I can't play church. Wow. I can't play church. I got to. I got to walk in a relationship with him. Amen. It's got to be some fruit there. Come on, we're closing. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Second Peter 3. Come on, we'll close with this. Second Peter 3, verse 10. Wow. This all could be destroyed. <laughs> oh, praise you, Father. He tells you how he's coming back, though. He gives us some, the word of God gives us some hints. He gives us some secrets. He's telling you how Jesus is going to come back. How's he come back? Come on. He tells you what direction he's coming from. What direction did the Bible say he's coming from? The east. <laughs> Study the word east. The word east means entryway. Where was the Door to the Garden of Eden. In the east. <laughs> the Bible telling us everything. It's all there. How is he going to come back? Come on. As the lightning flasheth in the eastern sky, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Wow. It's going to be like a flash of lightning. So fast. People are not going to have time to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I'm ready. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look at them say it don't work like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Second Peter 3 and 10. Look at this. But the day of the Lord will come as a what? Thief in the what? A thief in the night. He's coming like a thief. So I got to be ready. He says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass where? Where are they going? Away. <laughs> With a great noise. And the elements shall what? Melt with what? Fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Wow. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Verse 13, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Wow. You therefore, beloved, Seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. 
Somebody praise him tonight. Come on. Come on, let's stand tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we praise you. Thank you for your word tonight. May God, we be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of you. Seeking your heart having our trust and confidence and dependency totally in you, never trusting in the flesh. Pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, enduring hardness as a good soldier. Being not weary in well-doing, for in due season we know we're going to reap if we faint not, if we don't quit, if we don't give up, if we don't lose heart. We thank you, Father. We praise you now tonight in the name of Jesus. For all of these things are written for our trust and our confidence in you, for our joy and our hope in you of having great expectations, Father, that Jesus, you're sending him back for a church without spot or wrinkle to gather us to be with you forever. And we thank you, Lord, tonight. And we give you honor. And we give you praise. And we bless you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, somebody praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Faint not. Faint not. The word faint means to lose heart, lose courage, to quit, and give up. In our prayer, Jesus said, Luke 18, men ought to always pray, always pray, what? Not to faint. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't lose heart. Don't become weak. Stay in the spirit. Walk in the strength that he's already provided for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us offer time in the house of the Lord tonight. Kingdom investment time. Amen. The Bible says, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. Amen. God loves a cheerful, prompt, to do it, giver. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight as we sow our seeds. We speak increase, wealth, prosperity, abundance upon your people. I declare the overflow blessing. Thank you, Father, for the grace that you have released on us. Your word declares, O oh God, that your favor is a shield round about us. We praise you. You give us wisdom of witty invention. I declare, Father, entrepreneurship, innovation, increase, and overflow. And we magnify you now. We will not lack any good thing. We are blessed to be a blessing, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name. We are those believers that actually believe when we pray, we believe, we receive. Come on, shout, I believe, I receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may release your gifts tonight. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank God for all of you. Amen. Come on, praise God tonight. Amen. Listen, get this CD, get the CDs, amen. Let this word play over and over again. There's some people right now that you know needs to hear this message, amen. Get it to, get it to them, get it to them, take it to them, amen. Let it be a blessing to their lives, amen. We got to get this word out. Shall we got to get the word out, amen. In the name of Jesus, we praise God, amen. Listen, we are planning I'm uh, going to let you know the date, but we're planning for church family cookout. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to do a church family cookout right here. Amen. We're going to have an awesome time and fun and games and music and food. Lots of food. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so as we're approaching the summertime, we're going to give you specific dates in the coming days of what day we're going to do it. 
and uh, we're going to start getting the word out for that. Amen? Listen, love you so much. Father, we thank you, and we give you praise for everything said and done tonight. We give you all the glory, and we praise you now. We receive this word. We apply this word to our hearts. We receive it. And Father, we thank you now that, Father, we walk as lights in this world, that we bring healing, change, transformation, deliverance to others. And that's what you're calling us to be responsible for, God, in the name of Jesus, that we're saving souls, God, for your glory, saving souls out of the fire, out of bondage, out of defeat, bringing them into the kingdom. Let that be our focus. Let that be our mission. Let that be our passion every day in the name of Jesus. And we thank you now and give you praise. We speak over the vision. We declare the vision is fulfilled. Every seat filled to capacity, standing room only in this church. Souls coming forth from the north, south, east, and the west. We thank you, Father, for every building that will be on this property. Father, we declare right now in the name of Jesus, every business that will be open, we praise you. We thank you. We glorify you now in the name of Jesus. We declare, Father, we thank you for the books that will be birthed, Father, that will change lives around the world. We praise you now, and we thank you. I pray your blessing and your covering over your people. Father, touch them now. We lift up uh, Sister Shelley. Touch her, strengthen her family. We pray now in the name of Jesus. Healing, restoration, wholeness upon them. In the name of Jesus, Father. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, God. Amen. Amen. Love you. God bless you. We're dismissed tonight.